Alrighty then. I didn't realize you guys were here. Today's today's live is about eating apples. And you know what they say. A doctor, I mean, an apple a day keeps the doctor away. So I just thought, you know, I'll have the lunch and learn and, um, you know, have an apple with you guys while we start talking. Well, thank you so much for tuning in, guys. And you know what's about to happen. The next 30 minutes are going to be a little bit explosive. Either it's going to be me just yelling at you or am I just going to be... Um, you know, helping you market scale and grow your business. If this is the first time you're tuning in, welcome. And Troy, how come you tuning in? I thought you were traveling. I don't know what's happening. I'm lost now in the <laughs> in, in in trying to keep up with you guys. So obviously today um, is a continuation from um, a few series of um, uh, live episodes that we've been doing lately, talking about how to actually market uh, from the heart. Okay, and market from within to actually make sure that you're getting the right kind of customer who's got the right kind of pain so that you keep the poverty away. All right, just like I was eating an apple a little bit earlier on, you know, you, you keep, you do certain things to maintain a healthy, steady flow of clients, etc., etc. Now, Tyre says, does a pineapple count? I'm a bit lazy, so peeling off the pineapple, um, you know, skin, is, it's a little bit of a lot of work for me. So <laughs> I like it when it's peeled. I want to ask you one thing. Do you like a pineapple in a pizza, though, Taya? Let me know about that. Great stuff. All right. So obviously, guys, we're all doing a lot of stuff. We're all trying to make a dollar out of every 50 cents we're putting into our businesses. We really are scrapping left, right, and center and trying everything that works. Murad, how's it going? Thanks to you so much for tuning in. Um, the biggest problem that we are encountering and the biggest problem that I know a lot of us are finding these days is having a consistent flow of sales, consistent flow of leads, and a consistent flow of income. Now, if this is you right now, just hit like right now, okay? You are not alone. A lot of people are going through that um, problem because if you're not, then you're not in business, all right? This is what happens. You get a lot of leads and then you service them and then after you service them, you dry out and then you go in back again and it feels like you're starting. If this is you, hit like a lot of times again. The reason why this is all happening, guys, is I think we're not marketing enough or if we are, we're not allocating the marketing and sales to be two totally different things, um, you know, in, in the same basket. Okay. And Nicole, thank you so much, my love. I really, really appreciate you on this show today. Um, all right. So there's other people that we might find. Some people have 99 problems and the lead is not one. And other people have 99 problems, but converting those leads into customers is their biggest problem. Okay. And um, there's so much that needs to happen. And what normally happens, guys, is when you start a business, your main goal is to really attract the right kind of customer, is to really attract, you know, and, and really service their pain and give them an outcome. All right. And the way you do that is by really giving value. Right, because we're paid in direct proportion to the amount of value that we give to the um, market. So you can create an ideal avatar or you can, you know, find your ideal client and you can get them through your sales funnel. I know Russell Brunson is talking about funnels and all that. And you can provide them with all the information that they want. But if you don't know how to convert these people, you're never going to be successful. All right. It's, it's just one of those things that we have all these options to get leads in, but they're actually not converting. Or some people really have a really big problem. They can't even get the, the, the clients in. All right. So I want you to type in there so that I'm really specific on this show today. What is the problem? Is it converting or is it the traffic? Can you just type in as we go? Type in, if it's conversions, just type in conversions. If it's traffic, type in traffic, because those are two totally different aspects. But when we go to the market, we treat them as one thing, all right? So it's probably the most important step um, that I teach in the Online Prosperity Blueprint, that if you know how to convert your prospects into paying customers, then everything else looks like a piece of cake, 
All right. So if you're having problems bringing in the traffic, just type in traffic so that I know. But if you're having problems converting those people, then this probably is going to be a good show for you. OK, so as I've mentioned before, you know, what we're really, really looking for is the right kind of person. All right. And um, the right kind of uh, uh, people with this with, with the problem that our solution can fix. Now, Nicole says traffic. All right. Let me have a quick look, see at what it is that you do on that traffic. What are you selling and who needs it? I just want to make sure that I'm with you on on that part. OK, because traffic comes in depending on what are you offering? Do you have any lead magnets that are out there? Are you actually going out, giving out um, content or are you relating to the people that you are hoping to to bring to your business? Are you creating um, uh, campaigns? Do you have social media presence that actually does spell to say, yes, I'm the right kind of person to work with? Or is that traffic when it comes to you? Do you have stuff that makes them leave an email address so that you can follow through? All of those things maybe are things that we can talk about. Uh, what was her name? Sorry, Nicole. OK, so that we can really, really fix that. Today, I was talking to a client, a new client of mine that wanted to do SEO. And um, one of the questions that I asked them was, um, so, Mr. Man, what's the biggest frustration in your business right now? And then he's like, it seems that I really get busy with sales once, um, you know, maybe over Easter or after a certain holiday or after a certain, pro uh, you know, <clears throat> sort of uh, period. And then all my sales go through the roof. But then all of a sudden, everything just comes to a halt. Everything just stops maybe after Black Friday or after Christmas or after Valentine's or after Easter. You know, right? and, and I feel like it's like that with a lot of people. And then he has to start all over again with his marketing efforts and get to get new orders coming um, and um, you know have problems like that. Are you facing the same problems where you are failing to get constant leads, constant traffic, etc., etc. If that's you, then just type in yes there so that I know the kind of people that I'm dealing with. All right. This is a common pitfall with a lot of uh, startup entrepreneurs or coaches and consultants or the people that I really work with. You see, we get caught up in this vicious cycle where we're busy completing orders or if we're a coach, we're busy coaching. All right. And then we neglect time to go marketing and search for new customers. All right. So let's say your course goes for eight weeks and you're one on one with the person. Normally, when a, when a coach gets a customer, this is what they do. When a coach gets a customer, they fixate their whole mind, body effort on that customer because they're afraid to, to let them go. All right. So that takes up all their time, money and effort, and they forget all the other aspects of their business. But you know what? Your business is not supposed to stop just because of that one eight week client. OK, so, you know, getting that customer in the first place was through marketing. And that's what got you busy in the first place. But we tend to forget that. All right. So let's say you start having maybe you're a dropship company and um, you, you start having a lot of orders. People now start concentrating on maybe fulfilling those orders instead of getting more clients and studying the people that are coming in to figure out how can they convert a lot more. That's maybe the reason why the cycle goes into like you start and it's like you stop and then you go up again trying to uh, relate to the people. And then by the time you come back, Amazon has bought Whole Foods or somebody has bought something and whatever you were doing doesn't mean anything anymore. All right. So as a result, your, your sales are hitting a wall and then you find yourself having to ramp up your marketing efforts from scratch. And half the time it's more expensive. The people have probably have forgotten about you or somebody else on the market has come in. All right. All right. So today I was talking about, you know, um, how I was eating an apple when I started this show. And there's a saying that an apple a day keeps the doctor away. All right. So if you do certain things with your marketing every single day, you keep the ferment or what do you call it? The, the, the hunger, the, the starvation away. Remember, with the law of harvest, in order for you to, re, you know, reap consistent cells, you should regularly be sowing the right activities to achieve your goals. 
All right, don't just eat an apple today and think the doctor is is not gonna show or show up. Do you know what I mean? You gotta consistently be doing activities that will then make you, um, you know, s s have a cycle that's perpetual. Because remember, guys, people need to see you at least six times before they've even interacted with your work. All right, six times is a minimum. It can go up to uh, seven or eight times. I had another guy who's just recently signed up to my online prosperity coaching program. And he says, I've been watching you for the past eight months. It's a little bit creepy, but exciting all the same. You know why? Because every day I'm showing up. Every day I'm consistent. And every day I'm producing something that he has, that has given him the no like, and trust factor. All right. So some of us are just going in, doing our job, and then we forget how to create and relate with our prospects and those that haven't been yet convinced. And that's the reason why, you know, our sales hit a wall sometimes, boop, and then we don't know what to do. Then it becomes easy for somebody to come in with a shiny object and start telling you, hey, you should, you know, read La La Loopsie. And if you read La La Loopsie, you learn how to sell. That, that's actually true, by the way. If you... If you read this, I read this for my little girl and I get, you know, like concepts and everything else. Like, like here, how the other girl did not want to go out, out snow in the snow. And then the other girls sold, you know, the snowman to, 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 to their friend. And all of a sudden she started building snowmen and making the other girls jealous. Mm -hmm. See, so that if you want a program on Lala Loopsie, just send me $47 and I'll, I'll show you how they do it. Okay, all right. So at the end of the day, we are not going out to create new steady clients that are watching our stuff and getting ready in their sales process because the sales process is, 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 is in threefold. All right, I might, I might butcher this up a little bit. You know, there's people when they're first getting exposed to you and then once they're exposed to you, they're in discovery phase. Right. And after they've discovered about you, they are now, you know, learning from you or finding out what your information has to offer them and what's in it for them. And then pretty much after that, they in decision phase. Are you the person who can solve their problems? So at every point that they are interacting with your content, you know, uh, you're touching, you know, you're making a touch point visible to them that, yes, you are the person that they can trust six, seven, eight months down the line. The reason why we are having break, a break in the sales cycle is because we are only just becoming a one-click wonder. We're not doing enough of the marketing activities, blogging, or maybe showing up on live like this, or you know, putting even a simple status update just to let your prospects know that you're alive and kicking and you still care about what you're producing. Okay, so you know, most of us are now just getting caught up in, in working on other tasks, you know. And just making follow-up calls and yada, 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 and not really doing the stuff that really needs to be done to attract new people to your stuff. And also one other thing that we're not doing is we have websites that we're bringing people to. Have you got a pixel on that website so that when you're ready to throw out a campaign, you can then just send ads to those people that have already been in contact with your stuff. It makes your ad spend a whole lot che cheaper. All right. So, you know, some of the things that we're not really doing, it's, it's really simple. You want to take a small piece of paper. Um, let me see if I can do this. Take a small piece of paper and divide it into three equal, um, you know, columns like that. All right. So in there, you want to put in uh, cultivating. All right. Sowing. And reaping. All right. Sorry, I'm talking in an analogy of um, farming. You know why? Because I'm, I'm, I've got an African background and most of the time we are always farming and, uh, you, know, um, um, you know, cultivating crops. So this makes sense to me. I hope it makes sense to yourself, right? And then you want to plan your day specifically, all right? Every single day, make sure you're doing a cultivation um, activity, you're doing a sowing activity and you're doing a reaping activity. All right, and I'll break it down for you what, what exactly I'm talking about. Sowing is the prospecting aspect, all right? Every single day, I get, I get a lot of the dumb numbskulls asking me, why do you even do a Facebook Live every single day? And I tell them, I don't do it for you. 
All right, I do it for the next person who's never heard about me. And that's the reason why every single time I show up on this live, I'm introducing myself as if this is the first time I'm talking to you. You know why? There might be a chance that somebody is seeing me for the first time. So every single day, this is scheduled in my diary that for 30 minutes from 2 p.m. to 2.30, I'm out there trying to reach out to a new person every single day. All right? So in order for you to grow your business, you must be doing things on a daily basis and to keep your name in front of your customers and, you know, do things for the binge watcher. I know that not everybody's going to be watching this live right now. And I know that some of you guys won't watch it all the way through the end, but I'm going to find that one person who watches one, who watches two, who watches three, and in the fourth one, there's a call to action where I just simply tell them to grab my blueprint which I normally just put out like that. And if you still haven't gotten my blueprint, this is the time when you do it. You just type in blueprint. All right, and I'll be explaining this on the way. All right, so you got to be doing consistent actions that will put you in front of your customers unless your business is only meant to last until the end of the year. But if you really want lasting progress with your business, guys, you got to be doing stuff that puts you in front of a new person every single day. All right. In other words, you're trying to sow the seed of your message in the minds of many qualified prospects, as many as possible. And also, this is the time when if you've been watching me for quite a while, please share this video now. You, you just share it, please. All right. So you want to get in front of as many people as possible. And how do you make this happen? All right. These are a few things that you may consider. Um, sometimes we don't even talk to our family. I put up another video, search it, um, where I was talking about how to explain what you do to your family so that they can talk about you um, at a barbecue. All right. We're not sending out maybe cold emails. We're not campaigning, um, you know, you, you like maybe putting up a Facebook ad. We're not doing any SEO, are we? All right. We're not doing maybe sometimes if you're really desperate, any cold calling. All right. We're not placing ads in strategic places where our customers would be, you know, in print publications and broadcast media or just on the Internet. You are not reaching out to people that can help you, um, you know, explain a few things to yourself. Unless you don't have a business and you just enjoy watching me, that's cool. But if you are serious about your business, this is the time when you type in Blueprint so that I can help you capture the right kind of people, fix their pain, get them a really good payoff and produce a product that they actually want. All right. And all of these things are married together so that you can be sewing every single day. You're, you're, you're sewing and you're reaching out to at least one person and that one person is going to continue um, you know further your business and actually help you reach out to more people than you could ever imagine all right so you know and once you've put those things in the in the three categories um you 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 gotta be doing at least one action because we get caught up in being so busy and half the time the business is just maybe looking at your emails and refreshing and refreshing. Or if we've got a, um, you know, a, a, a campaign out there, normally a lot of people will just be refreshing to see the stats, to see who has um, opted in or to see who has liked your page. Or if you put out a blog there, we're constantly doing busy stuff that doesn't equate to money at the end of the day. All right. So you want to make sure you when you when you categorize your day like that, you're generating a piece of media that is designed to meet at least one person. And when you get bigger, two people, three people, four people. All right. The more people you reach out and meet out every single day, the more you will have sales in six months in four months in nine months. The reason why you're watching this video right now is because of the activities that you did Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine months before. All right. You made sure you had enough credit in your phone or you got a phone plan that enabled you to be sitting there and watching this video right now. Does that make sense to you? All right. And and, 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 and you bought the phone maybe a year ago or six months ago or five years ago. But if it's a five year old phone, then maybe you're not seeing me properly. But but whenever you bought it. You didn't buy it today specifically to watch this video, all right? So why do you expect to just wake up and have clients when you haven't done things prior? 
Does that does that make sense? So whatever you're doing today, you 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 should make sure that you're doing it for another day in the future. You're buying your seat in the future. So if you're not email prospecting, if you're not generating any sort of um, leads, or if you're not asking customers for their contracts or for referrals, or you're not organizing events so that you can speak in front of people, then you are not buying your stake into the future. You're not buying shares into your company. You're not buying shares into your startup. You know, just ask yourself, what three to five activities should I do every single day to put my name in front of uh, more prospects without annoying them, obviously, within reason and make those activities part and parcel of your a day every single day. That's the apple I was talking about a little bit earlier on. Every apple that you eat, you are keeping the doctor away. So that's the reason why you need to be doing consistent activities, consistent small actions that will then yield results into the future. And then when you're cultivating now, so, sorry, I wrote it a little bit wrong. So those three categories, you know, once you've established contact with those people, you want to cultivate those relationships. All right. This is the follow up phase. And, you know, people already know about you. People already trust you. People already sharing your stuff and telling other people about you. All right. So, you know, these people know, like and trust you. All you got to do now is convince them that you are the right kind of person and solidify that relationship. All right. Because obviously just because people have swiped right, it doesn't mean they are ready to Netflix and chill with you. They got to know you a little bit. All right. So, you know, when you're looking for a little few ways to nudge them a little bit closer to your to your periphery, you know, you, you're going to do um, periodic newsletters. You're going to maybe do a live like this every single day consistent. I'm not saying every single day, but do something consistently blogging or whatever. I do a live because my writing is, whoa, <laughs> if I write anything else, you know, you probably think my daughter wrote it. All right, but I can speak at least so I'm using this channel and then if you're watching this on YouTube Subscribe to the channel. You know why because we then you know repurpose this content and put it onto another channel All right, so that's that's the part where you are You know cultivating those people and making sure that you're bringing them um, Closer to you closer to 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 them offering you their wallet the idea here is to plan activities around building as much rapport as possible with your prospects and you're actually giving them a lot more reasons to do business with you consistently. You know what I mean? Because people are lazy out there. All you got to do is put information together and offer it to them. All right. So that's what you're doing in, in the cultivation phase. And in the reap, in, in, when you, when you, when you go off to reap, um, the benefits. This is the part where you're converting. Okay, you're you're farming versus hunting for new clients. You're solving their problems already. You're not selling. Okay, you're measuring and you're tracking your progress. All you're doing is just putting calls to action. All right, and letting people know and realize that you're the right kind of person to solve their problems. And all the the stuff that you're doing is a bit of online marketing here and there and. Um, you know, putting stuff out there to make it make it all together. So the, the reaping and the closing deals, this is the fun part. You know, this is the part where everybody gets really, really excited. You've done all the work and now it's time to get paid. Who doesn't want to get paid? Oh, well, I do. I know I want to get paid. All right. So when when you list, you know, your deal closing activities for each day. So every single day, you've got to have something going on that you're closing a deal or you, you're boosting the motivation to keep you going, you're prospecting, you're following up, etc., etc. You know, that way you never run out of leads because every single thing you do today is going to cultivate somebody who is a binge watcher who will watch it four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten 10 months down the track. Do you know how exciting it is to watch somebody who, 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 you know, somebody commenting on a video that I did in January, you know, and then they're like, oh my God, you're so right. And then you have to go back to the video and you're like, wait a minute, what did I even say that really excited them then? 
So depending on your luck and how you're building your business, you you know you want to always make things happen. I put a status up um, a little bit earlier on, and I was like, there's only three activities you gotta do, right? Which I've just mentioned. But once you know what they are, take action and make those you know reasons. I mean those uh, activities constant because people are tired of has beens or one click wonders. Right, so you want to be consistently there for your clients. You want to be consistently there for people that are going to be voting for you and your product. Okay, and just learn from what other people that are doing it well are doing, so that you you avoid the the, 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 the traps and the, the the mistakes they're making. I mean, in life, you can't make all the mistakes for you to learn. So you gotta at least find out other people that have done it wrong, and then figure out how not to do that. Do you know what I mean? So at the end of the day, it, it's it's so lucky that you get all the clients every single day. You're closing deals if you hit a gong or whatever it is, or you have something that's going on in in, in your business just to as an anchor for when you you get a sale. But luck is what happens when preparedness meets opportunity. All right. So when you're prepared, you've got everything going on for you. You've got the content. You've engaged with your clients. You've provided them with value. You you have inspired them. You've positioned yourself. You've educated them. You're engaging with them. Uh, did I say that already? Okay. Yeah. And all you gotta do is you know you you're just solving their problems now, and you just do some online marketing here and there, and a few calls to action, and you measure and track, and voila. You become an authority, you start branding yourself, and you've got a community of people that will buy from you over and over and over and over and over and over and over again. That, my friend, is the apple. An apple that you do a day, especially cons being consistent with these three activities, all right, will keep the famine away, will keep the starvation away, will keep the, 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 the sales, you know, sales less days away. When you're prepared and when, when, when all the things are working in your favor, that's when opportunity happens. And when you saw the right activities and you spend, you know, time cultivating relationships and, you know, with your prospects on a daily basis and you're consistent with your activities, guys, I want to assure you, you will reap a continuous harvest and your sales would have really exciting opportunities. All right. So I know that you really want this to work. I know that you've been patient and I know that you really want stuff to work. Here's what I want you to do right now. On your social medias, if you don't have LinkedIn and if you're a coach or a consultant or you know a, a small business person that I normally work with, here's a tip for having watched the video all the way to the end. Change your LinkedIn from a resume into a sales letter. All right, because you're not looking for a job. You you want to show people what it is that you can provide. A lot of people are looking at our profiles, but they're not doing anything because what you have on there is, um, you know, job material. So if you're not sort of looking for a job, change that LinkedIn into a, a sales letter. All right. That's a tip that I would give to you today. But at the end of the day, guys, don't have 99 problems in your business and not have sales. Because the main reason why businesses fail is because they don't have a consistent flow of leads, they don't have a consistent flow of income, and they don't have cash flow. And for you to get cash flow is to get as many, um, you know, as many, uh, um, as many leads coming through as possible. Okay, most of the time we might think we're being busy, we're doing work and we're doing getting stuff done, but we're not doing the right activities. We're not being consistent about those activities and we're not really looking at what's working. Okay, so at the end of the day, you might just attract people that are interested in your company or your products in any shape or form. But if you're not converting them into customers, if you're not nurturing them, if you're not doing or building any goodwill for your business, and if you're not serving them, then they're not going to vote for you to stay in power. And they vote with their wallets. 
Okay? So guys, if you've been watching this on YouTube, don't forget to subscribe. And also, if you're on Facebook and you've been following me for a while, let me know what topics you want me to cover. Um, and I also want you to tag a friend so that we, you know, we reach out to a lot of people. Um, my sponsors also want me to let you know that you can get the blueprint for free. So just type in blueprint at the bottom. Um, you know, otherwise I might not have a job or you might not see me uh, consistently um, doing these lives. But in any case, I really, really value you tuning in today and i really really value that you've shared this video as well in the meantime let me speak to you again tomorrow and let me know what you want me to talk about or if you want to invite me to talk on your podcast or on your show or whatever it is just let a brother know in the meantime thank you so much